Hey everyone, my name is Tim Bryan. I make videos on data science, sports and analytics, things like that. Most of my videos lately uh, have been focused on this ESPN Fantasy Football API, pulling fantasy football data. I also have a couple of videos on NFL Python package, loading data and visual, visualizing that kind of data. So if that interests you, uh, keep watching. So today is going to be a little different than my previous videos, uh, even especially on the ESPN API videos. Uh, essentially, what the last couple have been is I wrote out the code, uh, very dense code, and then kind of went line by line and showed you what I was doing. What I've done here is package all the stuff I've done so far into a Python, uh, this Python file here. And I've wrapped everything in these functions. So I'm going to write them out line by line. You can dive into that Python file if you'd like. But I'm going to just use these pre-built functions to load everything we want. Uh, it'll be a lot simpler, and I'm going to write it live right now. So uh, let's get started. So let's start with, I've written out what dependencies we need. Um, we're going to need the request library to make a call to the ESPN API. We'll need pandas for obvious reasons. Uh, we'll need NumPy. And then what I'm doing here is I'm importing uh, our config file. And these are a couple parameters we'll need. I'll explain each of these right now. So I uh, have this example. I'm not going to show you my exact parameters for security reasons, but here's what we need. So league ID, we'll start with that. It's the easiest one to get. You just go anywhere in your, let me close this real quick. You go anywhere in your ESPN league, logged in, and you want to click on the URL. And in the URL, it'll give you your league ID here. So that's mine. Next, the other two we need are cookie parameters. So if you don't know what a cookie is, essentially when you visit a website, the website will store something called a cookie in your browser storage. And this cookie allows the browser to identify you individually. And it kind of helps with, you know, handing out permissions. So like when I log into my ESPN Fantasy Football League, I'm generate these, these cookies. And then it knows that I'm allowed to see the Fantasy Football League and everything inside of it. So I'll show you how to get this. It's pretty simple. Uh, this will work in any browser. I am in Safari right now. So you're going to right-click anywhere and hit Inspect Element. And like I said, uh, cookies are something that's stored in your browser. So we'll click on the Storage tab. And then these are the websites that are storing things on my browser right now. <clears throat> We're concerned with ESPN.com. So the two things we want, I'm not going to scroll down and show you again for security reasons, the specific ones. They're down there. Uh, but what we want is the ESPN underscore S2 and the SWID. And this is exactly how they're spelled in that um, browser developer toolkit. So you should be able to find them. So just copy them into your config file, config.py file, where they should go. And you'll be able to access your league. So uh, a pro tip for this SWID, it comes in curly brackets. And you want to leave it in those curly brackets. I learned that the hard way. Okay, and then we're importing my uh, Python file, ESPN Fantasy Football Player Data, as FF, just to abbreviate it. So uh, it's, the thesis of this video is not to plot data or anything, but I think I would be uh, remiss if I didn't do a little bit of analysis once we pull all this data just to show you what we got. So we're, pu we're pulling in matplotlib as well for that reason. All right, so <clears throat> we're going to define our URL parameters here. So... This is what we'll feed into our function. So league ID, I'm keeping it simple. Uh, like I said, we're importing it from config up here. I'm just going to keep it as the same name. Uh, we'll do the same for the other two as well. So ESPN S2 equals ESPN S2. Same for SWID. Next, we're going to define the week and year to pull. So let's do year equals 2022 and week equals, we'll do last week, week two. Next, what these functions are doing essentially is looping through your entire league, each team in your league. And for each team, it's looping through the roster slots. So we need to define our league size. League size. There's 10 people in my league. And roster size, there are 16 slots for me. So just go to your... Your team count how many slots or players you have, and that's your roster size. So let's run both of these, import 
and those variables we defined. All right, next we're going to use this load league function. So I'll write it out as we go here. So I'm going to define our league equals, sorry about that, league equals load league. That's our function there. Uh, sorry, it's going to be ff dot load league. So it, it knows where where it's looking for this function, and that's in this Python file we made. So uh, the parameters are league ID, which we defined above as just league ID, the year. Um, so you could just write out 2022, but I think for reusability sake, I'm going to use the variables I defined. Same with week. You could do you could manually write in one or two, but uh, I'm going to use the variables, make it easier. And then the other two things we need are SWID and ESPN S2. So let's, uh, I'll print this out. The output is going to be a JSON string. And essentially what we're doing with the, the later functions is parsing through this JSON string, putting it in a pandas data frame so we can actually use it. And it, you know, it's, it's a massive string and there's a lot of data from this API. It's almost impossible to read, you know, going sifting through this is pretty difficult. So that's why I package it all in functions for you. So yeah, as you can see, I mean, some of this stuff is, I don't even know what it means. You can see how tiny my scroll bar got, like there's just, and this is for one week of data. So it's pretty amazing. Uh, there's a lot in there. So I'm gonna run this again so we can get that out of the way. Next, let's load our player data. What, what we're gonna do in this case with this function is we're gonna take that league variable, which is that giant JSON string you just saw, and we're going to parse through it and put it in a pandas data frame. Uh, like, I, like I'm saying here, our output is a data frame. So let's do our data frame equals load underscore, sorry, I did this again, ff dot load player data. All right, and the, the parameters here are the JSON string that we loaded before, which is our league variable. It's going to be the week the league size and the roster size. So let's get a look at this data. Oh, made a typo, let me fix that. All right, there you go. So, um, and, and this this GitHub, I'll post the GitHub, like I said in the, in the description, it's gonna be a work in progress. I'm gonna add more functions, try to make this like a go-to source for people trying to take ESPN fantasy football data. So if you'd like different columns, right now I have the week, the player name, uh, the actual score, projected score, the roster slot ID, the roster slots itself, and the fantasy team. So this is the fantasy team ID, I should say that. Uh, I also have a function for getting rid of this fantasy team ID and replacing it with a team name. So I'll show you how to do that right now. Let's reassign our DF variable to load underscore team underscore data. So the parameters here are the previous data frame that we just made. It needs to jo join itself on that. So I'll put that in there. Um, so that's our first parameter. Next is our league ID again. Uh, our year, our week, SWID, and ESPN S2. So I'm not actually going to run this because I don't want anyone to see the team names in my league. I'm sure they're inappropriate. So I'm not going to run this, but this is how you would do it if you did want to run it. All right. Um, so that's pretty much what you, how you do it. Like, you know, if you wanted to take this data frame, and export it to CSV and do it that way. If you're not super good at Python yet, you can feel free and you know do some analysis in Excel. Otherwise, you know, there's a lot you can do with this. So, like, I'll give you an example. Like, uh, if we wanted to filter down to just take a look at what my team did this week, so we'll do this DF, and we'll be referencing where my team is. So, DF. The column is player fantasy team. And then we'll just do where that equals three. 
I just know uh, offhand that my team is ID3. So this is, you can see what the projections were versus the actual. Maybe if you wanted to analyze those side by side, see how accurate the ESPN projections are, or I don't know, something like that. Uh, here's something we could do. Let's go, let's, let's group by um, team. Well, first, you know, let's, let's see how people's benches are doing. You know, sometimes that's kind of an interesting analysis to do to see if people are leaving a lot on the bench or maybe they're not picking the right players, something like that. So let's define a new variable. Bench data frame is equal to our data frame where uh, the position player roster slot, player roster slot is equal to bench. So that's what our, uh, let me print this out. That's what our bench, this is a list of all the players that everyone has on their bench. So why don't we group this by, we'll, we'll reassign the variable, use uh, pandas.groupby function, and we'll group by the player fantasy team. And we'll do a sum. Sorry. So there we go. So now if we get a look at this, um, a lot of the columns won't be relevant for us at this point. But when I plot this, it'll make a lot more sense. So we've got the player fantasy team. That's our index now. We've got ignore week. It's summing all the columns up, but we are only concerned with a couple. So player fantasy team, and then the player score actual. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to reassign bench data frame. We're going to sort these before we plot them. Uh, we'll sort by. We'll sort by player score actual. So the sum of all the bench points. We want to see which teams are leaving a lot of points on the bench. And is that a lack of skill? Is it bad luck? Are, is our team, you know, can point out which team has the most depth, something like that. So bench data frame equals bench data frame dot sort values. We're sorting by bench data frame actual. And we want to set, we want to do this descending. So we're going to set ascending equal to false. Let's see what happens now. I made an error. the problem. Key error. Very score actual. Okay, well. I guess we'll go ahead and uh, just plot it without sorting it. You know, you'll still get the idea. I'll have to take a look at why that function's not working for me right now. But uh, let's give it a shot here. So plt.bar, we want to sort on the x-axis. We, I'm sorry. We want to plot on the x-axis our index, which is our team ID. You might prefer to do uh, team name. But again, I'm not posting my team names here. Uh, and then the y-axis, the height of the bars, we want to do player score actual. Oh, you know what? I want to do bench data frame because that's grouped. All right, so you can see um, what's going on here. Somebody left zero points on the bench. That seems like maybe an error to me. Uh, or maybe there's no teams with an ID of six. So that's, you know, this is a case where you probably would want to do uh, by team name rather than number because matplotlib is going to plot on the x-axis sequentially. But, you know, team IDs here. So I'm team three. You can see I left a good amount of points on the bench. So that's kind of a, you know, an interesting way to look at it. Uh, yeah, so if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Uh, I'm here to help.
So yeah, thanks for watching.